Hi guys, this is Rohit Farmer and in this video I'm going to show you how to use NeoVim text editor and Jupyter Notebook from inside a Singularity container for our programming language. And for that purpose I have created this GitHub gist. You can find the link to this gist in the description of this video below. If you do not know how to use NeoVim text editor for our programming language as an IDE, then you can watch my previous videos the link to those videos are also in the description of this video so the very first thing that we have to do is build a singularity container a singularity container is uh, similar to a docker container but it is specifically built to run on uh, hpc machines high performance computing machines but you can run it on a desktop that has linux installed in it um, there is a beta version also available that runs on mac but I don't know if you can build a container using that beta version. I think you can only execute if you already have a pre-built container on Mac. So for more information about Singularity Container, you can go to its website, scilabs.io. And they have a very well-written manual uh, that you can follow on how to install the Singularity Container and then um, how to administer it. But if you want some quick instructions, then I also have a GitHub repositories with uh, some pre-built recipe files or definition files, which I have already tested and they are for my research purposes. So, so they work. And if you if you go down into this GitHub repository and look at the readme file, then I have some quick instruction how to build um, a container. So we are going to build a read-only container. That is, once the container is built, you can't modify it. If you want to modify the container, you have to rebuild using this um, recipe file. So these are the lines that is called uh, singularity recipe or singularity definition file. And this tells the singularity program, what are the operating systems that need to be installed? What are the packages that are need to be installed? Environmental variables and and, and other settings. So I'm going to use uh, Debian Buster that Singularity is going to download from Docker Hub. I have some labels over here that basically just tells what this container is about, some, some help. So this is really minimalistic. It only tells that um, this container is built on Debian Buster and contains R 3.5 and Python 3.6. Some environmental variables and then a whole load of packages so these packages are mostly libraries and uh, compilers that are used for any programming language any programming language or or programs that you are going to build inside your container then i'm going to install jupyter notebook and i'm going to install python and a couple of other things you can make this recipe file as complex as you want some of my recipe files if you go to my github repository are really really complex and they have a lot of things going on so i'm going to copy all these lines and we'll paste it in in an empty file called singularity.dev this file can be named anything i I just name it as singularity.dev that means singularity definition I'm gonna save and close it so for building a singularity container you need to have pseudo access or root access on the computer that you are using to build the container so here's the thing so you use singularity container to run it on an HPC but usually on HP and usually on HPCs you don't have root access or pseudo access so that means that you have to build the container on your local machine and then transfer it to an HPC and use it over there. Um, so yeah, that's one thing to, to be mindful of. So to quickly build a read-only container, you need to type sudo singularity build, the name of the container that you want to give and the definition file. So I'm gonna type this here, sudo singularity build name of the container i will just say container.sif so that is singularity image file and the name of the definition file sorry singularity.def and once i hit enter i have to give my password 
and this is going to start the build process it is going to take a lot of time because it's going to download the image from image of debian from docker hub and then it's going to download all the packages that i have asked it to install and then it's going to install each and every package one by one so this is a lengthy process sometime and, and it all depends upon how complex your uh, definition file is sometime it may take quite a few minutes uh, if not hours so the build process has finished and it took around five minutes and i have my container now inside my project folder folder so now i am going to uh, invoke a shell inside the container and then use neovim text editor to write and execute an r script so to invoke a shell inside a container you have to type singularity shell and the name of the container so now we are inside the singularity container so the good thing about singularity container is that it automatically mounts your current folder so if you are if your container is inside your project directory then your entire project directory is already mounted inside the container so you do not have to explicitly mount your project directory to work with your files and it also automatically mounts your home directory and that is advantageous if you are using vim text editor or neovim text editor because it automatically mounts your dot bash rc or init.vim file that works with the neovim or vim text editor that you have installed inside the container so you don't have to put your rc file or init file inside the container it can stay in your home environment and singularity will invoke it from your home folder so this is my project folder and uh, um, as similar to my previous videos on neovim text editor i'm going to first open my init.r file and and then trigger the r console by typing backslash rf so if you are not familiar with neovim using neovim text editor as an r ide uh, by using nvimr plugin then you should watch my previous videos i have a long video where i have explained a lot of things in detail and then i also have a shorter version of the same video where i have quickly gone through uh, the most important bits so, and you can find the link to those video in the description below now i have my r console triggered um, i'm going to open my r script which is in the script folder and you can see that um, my neovim environment is working i do not have the neovim init.vim file inside the container but singularity has pulled it from my home environment so i don't have to write the same file over and over again so i can execute it now this this whole thing is running inside the singularity container and so that's the good thing so if you uh, make a singularity container for yourself and and then ship it to to the hpc that you are working on then you don't need to ask the hpc people to actually install all the libraries for you you have everything in your own container and in not just library and the program you also have an environment to write your code uh, on the hpc itself and execute it both in interactive and batch environment so this is this is interactive environment i will also show you how you can use the same container to run the same script in batch environment so in in this script i am loading a data set called midwest from ggplot2 and i'm going to plot it so this is the plot which actually shows the area and the population and of the states from the midwest area of us so and then i can also save the plot it's going to go in the figures folder and i can also open um, the data set that I have loaded in a graphical form uh, all this I have shown in my previous videos where I have explained NeoVim text editor more in detail here I am showing that you can do the same thing from inside a singularity container and actually if you have seen my previous video you would see there is no difference between uh, executing this script from within and outside the singularity container it feels same to me so now I can save and quit the whole system and i'm still inside the singularity container and i can type exit to go outside the singularity container or exit the singularity container so if i go to my figures folder i have figure here if i go to my results folder i have my result over here so i've just shown you how to use singularity con 
container to interactively run a script inside a shell environment but you can also run it in the same script in the batch environment so to do that you can do singularity exec execute name of the container and then what you want to execute inside the container i want to execute my r script so i'm going to use r script command of our programming language dash dash vanilla uh, vanilla means that i don't want to load any saved r projects and i also don't want to save the r project after the script is executed and my script is inside scripts folder that is called test.r so if i press enter this is actually going to go inside the container load my script and run it and again we have our results in the figures and results folder so you can actually you write this line in your q sub or s batch file if you are working on an hpc so so i use it every day so i basically use the same container to work with my scripts interactively by invoking the shell environment and if the script is something that's going to run um, long hours and if i have to use like complex uh, setup of gpus and um, and parallel programming then i just use um, this command in batch processing so i can just submit it to the queue and just leave it running so this is very useful the next thing i want to show you that how you can do similar thing by using jupyter notebook so we have already installed jupyter notebook inside the container but we need to install something called ir kernel um, that you installed from outside the container so i'm gonna copy this line and paste it over here and then just run it so what it is basically doing it's uh, executing the container and then asking r to install these kernel specs so this kernel spec actually is not installed inside the container it's installed in your home environment and that's why we did not actually do it while we are building the container so it doesn't go inside the container okay so uh, because my computer already had this uh, kernel spec installed so it first removed it and then reinstalled it so now we can actually run a jupyter notebook inside the container and work um, in our browser and to do that I'm going to execute this line that says singularity execute the name of the container Jupyter notebook no browser that means that it's not automatically going to open the link in the browser this is useful when you are running this container on an HPC so you run the container on an HPC saying no browser so HPC will not try to open a browser right and it will only give you a link that you can copy on your computer and execute it. So I'm gonna hit enter. So now I have the link. I'm going to copy it and paste it to the browser. Paste and go. Yep, so we have this thing, <clears throat> sorry, Jupyter Notebook running inside the Singularity container. And if I click over here on new, then it shows both Python 3 and R. So I can go to the scripts folder and create an R notebook. And then I can type library tidy verse. And yep, it's gonna execute it. Actually, I can type the same code if I copy the same code from here and paste it to my Jupyter notebook and execute it over there. I can show you that your Jupyter Notebook is running inside the container. So I think if I just do ggplot, it should plot it. Yep, we have a plot over here. And if I just type Midwest, then I should be able to see uh, the data frame. Yeah, so we have the data frame. So this this whole thing is actually running inside the Jupyter Notebook and you can see things happening on your terminal and once you are done um, you can save and log out so uh, right now i'm running this jupyter notebook on my local machine but you can actually run this jupyter notebook inside the container on an hpc 
and get this link and paste it onto your computer and and write your code so this is very helpful i have some instructions on how you can do it on it uh, the same thing on an hpc so first you have to ssh to the hpc claim an interactive node and then navigate to your project directory singularity container should be inside your project directory now execute this that i have already shown so here you are not giving the ip address 127.0.0.1 that's your local host ip address so this is this is the ip you have to give when you are running the container on your local machine but if you are running it on hpc then you have to use ip address 0.0.0. .0, .0, .0, 0. sorry 0. 0.0.0.0 .0. right these things may change from hpc to hpc this works for my hpc sometimes when you are working on an interactive node then you have to do ssh tunneling also so you first ssh to a submit node claim an interactive node node note the name of that interactive node and then do an ssh tun tunneling to that interactive node directly and then execute the singularity container and jupyter inside it so once you have executed this command you will get again the link like this and you can copy that link on your local computer and you will have your jupyter environment so what does that mean that you are seeing the jupyter environment on your local computer but it is actually running inside a container on an hpc over ssh so that's pretty much it for this tutorial if you have any questions please leave your link um, in the comment section of this video or you can also uh, leave a comment on this github gist and i'll try to answer them thank you for watching